Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Hey, um, thanks for tuning in to another super duper exciting episode of the Elvis Workshop. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a lot to go over today, so hopefully you'll stick with the whole video. Um, one of my uh, viewers, one of my subscribers um, that I've gotten to know actually pretty good on my um, uh, the, for my YouTube channel here, the Elvis Workshop, has asked me, "What? Hey, what was your just in a passing conversation? What was your favorite Elvis concert?" Well. That's subjective, of course. It depends on what day of the week it is and, you know, what year I'm thinking about and all that other good stuff. But I actually was able to whittle it down pretty quickly. So the main part of this video is going to be I'm going to start knocking these things off one at a time and I'm going to get to what my favorite concert is. Not that you asked me, David did, but uh, I decided to make for good content on the channel. So, so hopefully it does. So last weekend, uh, before I get to the concert thing, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still fighting off this uh, end of this head cold. Not COVID. Um, uh, I want to go over a couple other things. I have some other things I picked up this week, and I want to kind of go over them first, and then we'll start knocking some of these concerts off and get to the my favorite concert. So first of all, um, if you don't know, I have a um, couple of videos up here previous to this one, but this is the uh, Don't Be Cruel Elvis by Paul Ballard from the Memphis Mansion. This is the book about Bill Black's life. Um, it's not just the Elvis part, it's his entire life, sanctioned uh, by his family. And uh, I still do have a few copies left. I've sold quite a few of them, but I do still have a few copies left. So if you're interested in one, um, hit me up. You can shoot me an email or a message on, on, um, on my YouTube channel, and I'll get you taken care of. There's $75 total, including shipping, in the United States. So. I'll send it to you total, total tax, you know, all that good stuff, whatever, $75. Anyway, let's get to the, let's get to the meat of this. So I was in Phoenix last weekend and I went to, um, uh, Asylum Records, very cool record store. I love record stores. If you go into one that's, that's, uh, just super well done, it's nice to tell people about it. So Asylum Records, go check it out if you're ever in Phoenix. Um, I went into another one and I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll, I'll, I'll put the name of it down in the comments. Um, they were good to me and I, I want to make sure I get them out there. So, um, so I picked up a few records, went next door, bought me some new threads and, um, and then I came back and bought a couple more records. So, um, in the movie Elvis, that's the way it is. They show Colonel Parker's office briefly. It's on the fourth floor of the international. Um, uh, I don't know where, but it was in, it was in a suite or a big, you know, double connected room or something. Anyway, they, they made, um, one of the rooms or a couple of the rooms into his office on the fourth floor. I don't know where, um, but in the movie, they show the walls and the ceiling all plastered with the same poster. It's a print of a painting. It's not particularly good, but that's what they did. And they were selling those at the merch tables and things like this. So it's not something I've seen a lot. But I have seen it here and there at uh, Elvis conventions and things like this. And uh, But they, in the record store, they had one on the wall for next to nothing. So I picked it up. So I'm going to show that in the video here. It's still in the frame that I picked it up in. It's a little faded. It's from 1970, so that's to be expected a little bit, a little, you know, exposure. I'm going to clean it up, probably put it in a new frame. Where the hell I'm going to hang it at, I don't know. The Elvis workshop is completely full. Look at the walls. All four walls look like that one, just with different stuff. So, <clears throat> so if you ever watch the show American Pickers, they say that the time to buy something is when you've never seen it before. So I've seen that poster before, not frequently, not a lot, but I have seen it before, and it's usually expensive, more expensive than I think it's worth. So finding it for this price, it was perfect. So, But the other day I was out here in Las Vegas, and I went to Record City, which is another great spot. If you're ever in Vegas, you need to hit up Record City. They are awesome. And uh, so when I was at Record City, I ran across this right here. File that under, I have never seen it before. The first thing that I took notice of was this font on the back and the front that's very similar to <clears throat> Elvis's last few albums during the 70s. So that's the first thing that caught my attention. <clears throat> I thought it was some kind of budget release at first. I didn't know what it was. I'd never seen it before. But that font um, grabbed my attention because it is an RCA. It is official. It is an official RCA product, and in fact, it does say RCA on it. But I, you know, that's the first thing that grabbed my attention. So it has a poster in it, which is a massive poster. It's this picture here, which is horrible. It looks like Elvis has an Oscar. You know, the the Oscars for acting. 
Anyway, there's, um, I've done a little research since then. This is from Germany, and it was put out in 1977, and there are three different covers. There's this cover, there's one um, from uh, That's the Way It Is, of a profile shot of Elvis singing, and then the 1975 um, photo that was used on the 1976 album, uh, live from Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis, Tennessee. So, I picked this up. There are mm, 11 records in here, I think. <laughs> uh, well, there's seven, I'm sorry, seven, seven records in here, and I've been playing them, and you know what, the sound on this is phenomenal, and you can get these online for about 40 bucks, for seven records, um, officially released by the label in 1977 in Germany, and it comes with a big giant poster, and the sound is really great, I'm, in rec I'm on record number three right now, of course it's in chronological order, so it starts with the Sun stuff, and then the early RCA stuff, I am not disappointed at all. I'm not a big fan of listening to compilations where it just goes in chronological order and all that. But I, listen, if, if it's if it's something that I've never seen before, I'm going to pick it up. So I've never seen it before and I picked it up. And I actually have no regrets about it. It's, it's actually really good. So a couple more things. I did a video not too long ago showing some of the stuff I grabbed in Memphis when I was there recently. One of them was the Elvis Southbound FTD. So there's two concerts on here. One is from Tampa Bay and um, one is from Atlanta. The Tampa Bay concert, I just want to kind of do a little, not a review, but kind of feedback on this. The Tampa Bay show, they're both soundboards, but the Tampa Bay show suffers from a little, just a little bit of um, flatness. The, the sound is a little bit flat. Kind of takes away from the energy of the show, if you know what I mean. You listen to the show and it just sounds kind of blah. That's the Tampa Bay show. With that said, the Atlanta show is awesome. So I don't know what it was about Atlanta. Elvis loved Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it just seems like every concert he ever put on there is excellent. He played at the Omni, which they used for concerts, basketball, NBA, uh, for, for years and years. I don't know if they still use it or not. I know they did up until a few years ago, at least. Um, Dick Grove, who was a very close friend of mine, told me that Elvis always loved Atlanta. He was really tight with the police department there. And uh, the, 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 um, the, there's just a lot that goes into it. I don't want to waste too much time on it. But Elvis, for some reason, whatever, whatever it is, always got up for the Atlanta shows. And it's no different on this one. This Atlanta 1975 Elvis uh, Southbound FTD, the Atlanta show, is absolutely fantastic. It's really great. The sound on the first CD is a little flat, a little blah. But the, the Atlanta show is worth the price of admission. So if you're kind of on the fence about this one right here, Elvis Southbound FTD, grab it. Um, the one show is worth the CD purchase alone. Now, I want to get to this, and then we'll get to the concerts over here. There's a box set that came out just recently called Kansas City 1974 Revisited. Three panels. Let me show you this artwork is awesome. So first of all, they built in the hype sticker, so you don't have to try to peel it off of the plastic and put it on, put it back on the CD. It's just built in as part of the artwork. It's great. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love. I love hype stickers. So it's cool that you don't have to do any work to get it on the cover, and it's nice and straight, and it's in this perfect spot. So this is a three-panel release. It's two CDs and a DVD, and those pop off. And of course, there's photos underneath. Okay, so. This one's a little hard to get, it's a little pricey, but I'll tell you what, it's freaking worth it. So there's two concerts, there's an afternoon, it's the same day, afternoon and evening show. I had the evening show on CD from another bootleg, I'm not sure, I can't remember the name of it now, but uh, so anyway, I got this, I listened to it, both concerts are great, the first one's a little bit more flat on the sound than the second one, the second one has the, uh, the new stereo mixing that's going on, and it actually makes a really big difference, people complain about it, but look, my ears are what matters when I'm listening to something. I don't care if somebody does a fake stereo thing. If it sounds good, I'm in. I'm in. I'm on board. So that's what happens here. So this, the evening show is the uh, fake stereo, if you want to call it. But listen, when I'm listening to the show, it sounds fantastic. So I'm not going to complain. But this, this set, other than the great um, artwork, is all about the DVD release. So there's a lot of opening show footage. Um, I'm friends with Jerome Stump Monroe, the drummer for the Sweet Inspirations, former drummer. And um, there's footage on here I've never seen. And not only is it great to see it, but it's in clarity like I've never seen before. The, the, the transfer from the film, the 8mm that they had, um, 
was uh, is phenomenal. It's it's great. And uh, JD is just being a total clown on the stage, dancing back and forth, throwing the microphone, doing all hooping and hollering, doing all this and running. And Stump is back there just going at it. You know, and it's just awesome to see. And um, I showed it to him. He loved it. It was fantastic. Um, but then they show footage of Elvis coming and going from hotels and airports and stuff, which is cool. Then they show the, the, the plane unloading with all the show members, which is really cool to see. It's pretty, it's pretty in sentimental to me. I knew a lot of those people. A lot of them are no longer with us. So, and some of them still are. So it's cool to see. But the best thing about this entire thing is the Rex Martin transfers. They had Rex Martin footage, who was a fan, if you're not sure or don't know. Rex Martin um, was at this uh these concerts and filmed from the crowd masterfully it is on youtube but it's in awful quality these were taken from the original film and and digitized and put on this dvd and it is phenomenal the suit just jumps right off the, sh the shot uh elvis is just so he just jumps right off the TV. You just have to see it for yourself. So um, thank you to my buddy over there in Europe for hooking me up with a copy. I paid for it, but they, they, I'm not saying I wouldn't pay for it, but I'm just saying he helped me get it because it's hard to get. That's what I mean. So Kansas City, 1974, or Kansas City, 74, Revisited. Grab this sucker if you can. It's hard, 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 hard to find, and it's awesome. So that's it. So now, with that said, I'm going to get to this mess up here. So... My buddy David asked me, what's my favorite Elvis concert? And I said, well, I don't know. You know, but actually I did know, and it wasn't hard. So to celebrate this, I'm going to open something. Because <laughs> I have nothing else to open on the video today. This is uh, not one of my favorite concerts, but it's actually a great show. So Elvis's 1976 tour was not his best. Uh, obviously, Elvis was in trouble uh, financially, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally. He was in all kinds of trouble all over the place. And... Um, he really shouldn't have been out on the road, but he was, and it's neither here nor there, and this is where we're at. So a friend of mine actually gave me this as a gift. Um, thank you very much, buddy. And uh, what it has is it has the mini record sleeve, the slip case um, for the CD, and then a vinyl version of Old Times They're Not Forgotten. Now, I have this on another CD, just a regular jewel case. So this was pretty cool. This is in um, Tuscaloosa, Alabama at the University of Alabama. Uh, Monday, August 30th, 1976 at uh, 8.30 p.m. And this is a double album on blue vinyl with a CD. And these are kind of hard to find, man. These these bootleg albums are not a dime a dozen. So I got one, and I'm going to open it because I hate plastic. If, if it's in plastic, it's got to go. I'm not going to have something that uh, I'm just going to leave on the shelf. I'm going to open my stuff up and listen to it. So I like to open it on my channel to make people squirm. <laughs> it does have a little bit of a hype sticker. It says limited edition blue vinyl. I will be peeling that off if I can and slapping it on here. So I'm going to open this up. Oh, there's the CD, the slip case, a little mini vinyl they call this, I guess. The CD does not want to come out very nice, but at least it won't fall out. So it's exactly the same as the vinyl. I know it's hard to see from over there, but everything's on there. And see you later. I don't do plastic. And this is a gatefold, so let's see what's going on inside. Pretty cool. Look at that. Some nice shots of Elvis. Looks like there's three Elvises on the stage on the one side, one on the other. And then let me pull out one of the albums and take a look at what color the blue is. Look at that, baby. Nice. Moody blue blue, <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm going to put this down. I'll do the hype sticker later and get the plastic. Okay, so. I, um, you know, I I have stipulations. I have rules. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if, if it's going to be my favorite concert, it's going to be something that's going to be enjoyable to listen to, right? So... One of the problems right off the bat is that a lot of these concerts are fantastic, they're phenomenal, they're great, but they're audience recordings. So the sound suffers dramatically in some cases. So, unfortunately, we're going to lose a bunch of these right off the bat just because of the sound quality. Because I'm not going to call something my favorite show ever. It might be a better show than my favorite one, but if it's not something that's rich and, and, and a pleasure to listen to, it's, I, it's not going to make the cut. Sorry, those are my own rules for my own concert. So let me start with this one first. This is July 19th, 1975, my brother's, my brother's birthday. 
It was his third birthday, but it was still his birthday, July 19th. This is called America's Own. I'll give you a quick uh, look at my America's Own. Nassau Coliseum, 1975, as I said. Um, and Elvis says, you'll never walk alone here. Totally unrehearsed and absolutely blows it out of the water. The whole rest of the show is absolutely mind-blowing. It's a great, great concert. Unfortunately, it's not going to make the cut because of the sound quality that is it's really hard to listen to. It's such a great show. Hopefully, 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 maybe one day. Come on, Bruce Jackson. Maybe one day this will come out on soundboard and it will it will um, set the standard. But right now, it's in at least the top 10, in my personal opinion, because of the effort that Elvis gave, the show that he gave, and, and the unrehearsed You'll Never Walk Alone, which is phenomenal. But it's got to go because of the sound quality. If you hear the CD hit the floor, it's okay, I have carpet. It's okay. So I'm going to knock off a couple more here real quick for the same reason. So these guys right here, Such a Night, Pearl Harbor, 1961. I'm slipping, man. 1960, 61, 61. Uh, the Pearl Harbor Show, a great show. Really great show. Elvis came out and just tore it up. But the sound quality again, ugh, gotta go, sorry. Same thing here with the Tupelo shows, Welcome Home, um, the Tupelo Zone concerts. Great shows, Elvis is in top form for the 1950s, but again, it suffers from poor sound. And then this one, the Louisiana Hayride, the final show at the Hayride at the Hirsch Coliseum. I always say auditorium, and then I go back watch a video and I cringe. Hirsch Coliseum in, in uh, New Orleans, uh, sorry, in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, um, which I've seen, by the way, I've driven right by it on the freeway. It's awesome to see that. Um, I've been to Shreveport a couple times, and I've never been inside the Hirsch Coliseum. I've driven past it. I've been inside the Municipal Auditorium, but never inside the Hirsch. But anyway, so Elvis's very last hayride show should be right up there. If you know anything about Elvis and his concerts and his 1950s tours, this show right here was amazing. Again, sound quality. I don't know. There's nothing we can do about it. There's really nothing we can do about it. It is what it is. So those ones, they have to go. Love them. Great shows. They have to go. Let me get rid of you. Okay, let's go with these two. I'm going to make some people a little upset right now, but that's okay. It's my opinion, and it's my channel. <laughs> okay. Elvis, Prince from Another Planet. My box set is tore up from the floor. Look at that corner on that thing. It is all kinds of messed up. Look at, I'm going to give you a closer view just so you can see it. Look at the corner on that box set. I take good care of my stuff. What the hell happened? I don't know, but that's what it is. That's the way it is. First of all, he's wearing his belt upside down. We won't hurt him too much for that. <clears throat> so, Prince from another, from another Planet. So you have Afternoon in the Garden and then the official release, which I have on vinyl. Um... It's a great show, but my complaint is that Elvis is a little stiff at first. He starts the show off, and then immediately the, 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 the excitement of the show comes to a screeching halt because he has to do until it's time for you to go. So, the, you know, this deserves to be um, paid attention to in the time when it happened. That was a huge song at the time for the original artist, and so Elvis covered it. Today, it doesn't translate well on CD or video. It's boring as all get out. I, it's a great song, actually. The lyrics are great. It's a great song, but not for a rock concert and not for song number three. But the main problem I have with the garden, other than that, is that they were so amped up and so excited to be at the garden, Elvis and the band, is that their tempo is just, they're, they're going 100 miles an hour. I showed this video of this concert um, that's on this, on this DVD here. Uh, to Stump, the drummer, he opened that show, and he said, man, it's not even any good. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, there's no rhythm, there's no tempo. He's like, everybody's just going 100 miles an hour. Everybody's playing 100 miles an hour, and, and nobody's in the pocket, and there's no feeling. It's just everybody's going 100 miles an hour. Elvis is singing so fast, uh, and, and he's right. So with that said, Prince from Another Planet, Madison Square Garden, you got to go. So not, not a bad show at all. Bad shows, plural, not at all. I love them. But there's, they're just not in the pocket where they need to be. It's just not the best concert 
Elvis ever gave. I'm not going to put, by the way, the Aloha, none of the TV stuff. I'm not going to put the Aloha. Uh, the Aloha is not his finest moment ever by, by a long stretch. And I'm not putting the 68 special. That's a TV show. That's not really specifically a concert. They did concerts, but you, know, you get what I'm saying. So let's go to 1969. I'm going to kick out the whole year of 1969, and that might piss somebody off too, and that's okay. That's that's fine. Elvis is a little too raw here. One is the songs aren't developed, um, the, the arrangements and everything, they're not really where they should be. But my main problem with these shows, and, you know, again, I'm not being unfair to Elvis, I'm trying not to be. Uh, in the moment, at that night, when these shows took place, I'm sure that everything was great. But listening to them back, the long pauses in between songs, the horrible prepared jokes, it just doesn't go over well. And it's uncomfortable to listen to. You have the 11 minute life story on these, and it just it just drags the show down. His singing is great. The band is absolutely on fire. The arrangements aren't where they want to be. Uh, they're still working on it. It's a brand new show. But Elvis's prepared material in between the songs, the long silent moments, and the just the awful jokes, to be honest with you, just ruin ruin the experience. So, though there's some awesome um, material from 1969 edited. It's great. And the same thing for the onstage album, which I don't even have up here. Same thing for that. It says February 1970, so it's not one specific show. So I, I wanted to kick that out for that reason. Um, so now, let's go over here. This is the Elvis on Tour era time frame. This is fantastic. This is Greensboro. This is actually a two CD set, but I'm just going to go with Greensboro. It says from Richmond to Greensboro. There's my buddy Dick Grove on the back. Greensboro, North Carolina. I really don't have anything bad to say about this. Elvis just doesn't exhibit a whole lot of personality because he knows he's being filmed. So he kind of keeps the um, not prepared jokes, but the uh, off-the-cuff jokes, which actually were always, to me, a lot of fun. He keeps those to a minimum, so he's very business-like in these shows. And I don't mean to complain. I'm not complaining. But if I want to find the very best concert, in my own opinion, I, I'm going to nitpick the little things um, to get to the best one. So... There's nothing wrong with this show at all. This Greensboro show is, they're both, the Richmond, they're both great. Greensboro is the better one, in my opinion. But I'm going to take it out just because Elvis is just a little bit too dry. He's just a little bit too, he's just, he comes out, sings the songs, leaves, and there's not really a whole lot of personality. One part of being an Elvis fan is the personality. It's always nice to hear him being his normal self. And that's the same thing with this one. This is 3000 South Paradise Road, which is filmed here in town, or recorded here in town at the Hilton Hotel, which had changed over from the International Hotel. And um, this is a concert and rehearsal disc, but I'm just going to talk about the concert. It is a great, great, great show. But again, Elvis lacks a little personality here. He's very businesslike. And you know what's funny is that some of the shows are so loose, and he's joking around too much and fooling around too much, and that kind of ruins the show. But these ones here, this one and the former that I was speaking about, there's actually not enough personality for this topic today. So, love this FTD. It's a Follow That Dream collector's label um, release. Great artwork, great show, um, but it doesn't reach the upper echelon. So, for that reason, you gotta go. All right, so, the, I, I, I didn't think when somebody, when... Um, David asked me what's my favorite concert, and I didn't think 1976 would come into play at all, but actually it did right away. So the last tour Elvis did in 1976, he did five shows, uh, five cities, five shows, and um, we have one show that's really not represented. I think it's out on one horrible, horrible audio audience recording. I've never even heard it. But these are the others, and this is uh, Birmingham and uh, Atlanta, Dallas, and Pittsburgh. So I don't need to give you close-ups on all this. I'm sure you can, you know what I'm talking about. You probably have all these. You should have all these. So um, Birmingham, Alabama, Dallas, Texas. Of all the shows on that last tour of 76, um, the Dallas show is my favorite, my personal favorite. I love the way Elvis starts the opening of CC Riders. Uh, he does it in a way I've never heard him do before or since on any other show. And I love it. He just gives out the, that primal scream yell at the beginning, which is awesome. Um, and this record right here, 
this is the second press pressing, I believe. It's not the first. I know it's not the first. This is, I think, the second pressing of this. This is a bootleg album of an audience recording, and it's just a great show. Now, um, New Year's Eve just passed, and every year I watch this concert just because. Why not? And um, what a show. It's just great. But there's two things that kick all of these out. Well, not all of them, but there's two things that, there's one thing that kicks all of these out. Let's just say that. Elvis got a little lazy and complacent near the end of his life and started trying to figure out how to waste time on stage so he could hit that one hour mark and not have to do a whole lot. That's just the way it was. So he would spend about half of the show introducing the freaking band. I don't need to hear the electric clavinet solo. I don't need to hear a drum solo for five minutes, eight minutes. I don't know, all that stuff. So unfortunately, Elvis's inspiration, his singing, his mood, um, his voice, everything, his charisma that he shows, uh, the interaction with the fans, all that stuff, it's all great. But all these shows have to go because I don't need to listen to band introductions for half the show. It just kills the momentum of the show. We're missing out on Elvis singing other songs because we're listening to the electric clavinet solo or the bass solo. And it was just simply Elvis being lazy. That's just the way it goes. So that's just the facts. So you can dispute it if you'd like. I'd, I'd love to listen, but that's what it is. So it's gonna come down to these two. This is a bootleg. It's June 2nd, 1975 in Mobile, Alabama. It's called Sold Out in Dixie. Okay. It's a partial soundboard. It's missing the first couple songs, um, which actually they replaced from this show to make the disc complete. So there's this one. And this one, which is March 20th, 1974. And I have the Legacy release. It's a two CD set of the show right before it. And then the uh, Memphis show. I have the FTD, which is exactly the same as the Legacy release, except it's an FTD. And it's in uh, this packaging. And it's only one show. The Legacy has two shows, so a little bit different. And then this is the original album release from 1974. So this is not even in the, in the um, uh, conversation, but I wanted to bring this up for a reason. This thing suffers from um, two things. One is you can only put so much on a record. There's only so much time, so only so much space. So there had to be some editing. So unfortunately they dropped off some really great material. Second is the sound. If you put this on a record player and put this on side by side, the sound difference is, is just night and day. This one is super quiet. It's hard to hear it. This one actually sounds amazing. Elvis, this was his last release. It actually came out after he passed away, but his last recordings. And it's the CBS TV special soundtrack. And the, the material isn't fantastic because Elvis was in horrible shape. And, you know, the voice was there, but it's just not like it should be. Anyway, with that said, this album is so good. It's just, it's just, it's just awesome. But because of the restrictions of time, they could have made it a double album. Um, and also there was other material recently released before this, the Madison Square Garden, the Aloha. They were trying not to be too redundant. So the songs that were super redundant, other than the opening and closing numbers, they tried to get rid of. So, excuse me, there was some editing that went on here. There was a bootleg that came out called Steamroller Blues and it had um, Steamroller Blues on it. And I had never heard that performance um, from this show because of the editing until the box, the, the bootleg. And then the, um, there's a, the platinum box set came out uh, that also has that same performance on it. And it's, it's so good how they drop that onto the cutting room floor and left some of the other stuff on here is beyond me, but they did anyway. So this album is super cool. There's something really nice about this. One is the cover shot. It's the only non-live uh, shot of Elvis in concert on a 70s album. Um, or let me say that again. It's the only album in the 1970s without Elvis's face on it. Let me just say that. Um, this concert was recorded at the Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I've seen several shows there, and it's, it's a great venue. Unfortunately, it's closed now. Hopefully it reopens and it's not raised. Um, 
funny, there's a couple stories about this show. One is nobody knew this was being recorded as a live album until it happened. And here's what I mean. Both Jerry Chef, bass player, I'm sorry, no, not Jerry Chef. He wasn't on there. It was Duke Bardwell. Um, uh, uh, Ronnie Tut, who played drums, and James Burton both told me the same guitar, both told me the same story. As they were walking on the stage to take the stage to do the concert, there were people there from the record label with releases that they had to sign to release the recordings and allow this to be recorded and released as a live album. There was no negotiations beforehand. Nobody was told beforehand. There were no extra rehearsals for a live album. No nothing. They were literally walking onto the stage to do the show. And they said, hey, by the way, sign this because this is going to be a live album. And so they were forced to do releases on the spot. How about that? That wouldn't happen today. Uh, and number two is after this concert, this was the uh, end of the tour. Um, there was actually an after party at Graceland. And there were Greyhound buses outside of the Mid-South Coliseum that were um, chartered to take every show member to Graceland. So Stump, the drummer from the Sweet Inspirations, told me this story. He was on that bus, and if you've been to Graceland, which I assume if you made it this far into the video, you have been to Graceland. Um, the buses are pretty big, and the gates to go through the gate uh, to get in the, uh, at Graceland, the property there, it's you know it's not super wide, and you kind of make a turn to get in anyway. So when the bus one of the one of the buses was going through the gate, it hit the gate and ripped it right off the wall. Um, I've never heard of this before. Stump has no reason to make it up. I, I'm sure that there's a paper trail that could um, dig this up from Graceland. That's, to me, a very interesting story. Um, I have been to Graceland before, and I've seen dents on the gate, which have been fixed on other trips. So people do hit the gates, uh, but the bus apparently hit the gate and ripped it right off the wall. Stump told me that the uh, there was a big giant room with a, uh, where the party was going on, which is the trophy room now, um, and that he told me uh, this was his words, that he sat in a yellow room with a bunch of TVs. <clears throat> well, he hadn't been to Graceland since 1976, Elvis's last stop there <clears throat> in uh, July of 1976. But his last time at Graceland was at this party in 1974, March of 1974. I took him to Graceland a few years ago, and we went on the tour, and I took him through there, and he saw the TV room, which is obviously what it's called now. And um, But he described it to me from his own memory from the 70s without knowing anything about it. He just said... Everybody was in this big giant room during the party, and I was uh, down in the basement in this yellow room with all these TVs. I thought that was awesome. So anyway, that's the, when I listen to this concert, that's what I think of. And then one other quick story. Al DeVoren, who was famous for saying, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building, um, said that Elvis never made a request to him ever of any kind, um, except for one time, and it was this album. Um, Elvis came to him and said, hey, um, I'm very proud of my hometown, and I want people to know that this was done in Memphis. Can you just say something different at the end of the show um, and uh, mention Memphis for me, please? So at the end of this concert, Al DeVoren says, Elvis has left, ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left for Graceland. This concert was recorded live tonight in his hometown in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, Elvis was very proud of that, and he wanted that on the record. And he made sure that when the record was released that that was on there. So I took Al uh, DeVoren to Palm Springs, and he uh, sadly passed away in a car accident on the way back. But I, I'm the one that took him there. And we talked about this, and, and I had the CD in the car. He had never heard it since that night. So the day before Al passed, I actually played that for him. And he was very emotional about it, and, and he told me that story uh, about Elvis never asking him to do anything different except for that one night. And that's all in this concert. So that's that's pretty cool. I wish that... I wish there was a double album release. I understand why they didn't. There was some redundancy with the with the um, on tour movie and the Aloha soundtrack, and uh, and they didn't want all that all you know the same songs over and over re re released over and over. So let's get down to the end here. So this one is a double CD. It is the Memphis concert and the one before it. I think Greensboro. Uh, just going by memory, and I can't see right now because I don't have my glasses on. So I'm going to kick this one out because it has another concert that's a little subpar. So that leaves these two right here. So I've got Sold Out in Dixie, 1975, and the what's commonly referred to as the Graceland album. It's called, it's technically called As Recorded Live in Memphis, Tennessee. I think that's what it's called. On stage in Memphis, Tennessee. This one here, the 
crowd interaction that Elvis has is so great. There's uh, his performance of Burning Love, Bridge Over Troubled Water, and American Trilogy are my three all-time favorites that he ever did, ever. And they're all on this show. His mood is so great that night. He's in such a good mood. He's goofing with the crowd all night. He's 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 joking around and but his his singing is phenomenal. People yell out songs and he sings the songs they ask for. Somebody yells out Mr. Train. He says, You wanna hear Mr. Train? Okay. And they go into it. It's just great. Um he does do band introductions. Um thankfully they're a little bit short in here and he's he's so energetic that he's yelling and screaming during the band intro introductions. So I kind of forgive that a little bit. But um at the end of the day, it's this one. This is a single disc. It is a Follow That Dream release. It's the entire concert unedited. So it has the songs back that are missing from the vinyl release. It's a single disc, so it doesn't have the other show on it. The sound has been redone, and um, it's just fantastic. It has the, the back original back artwork here on the inside. It's got a nice little book that goes with it. It has a nice little book that goes with it. This, to me, not only is the show great, but Elvis knew he was at home. In Memphis, he knew he was being recorded. He knew it was a live album. This show that's on here, that's just two days earlier, is pretty good, but he's still not hitting on all cylinders. On this concert here, he knows this is going to be a live album. He's in Memphis. He's in his own backyard. He's showing off. When he does a uh, "My Baby Left Me," wow! It just it, it, I can't even begin to explain it to you unless you just hear it. I'm sure that most of you listening to this or watching this know what I'm talking about. But think about the crowd. Elvis had his his family there. His girlfriend Linda was there. He's and her family, and he's got people that he went to high school with, people that he knew before he was Elvis. You know, when he was just that, you know, Elvis Presley, um, just a regular guy. So he knows there's people in that crowd that he grew up with. He knows there's people there that knew him before he was famous. And he knows he's going to put out a live album from his hometown. And he tells Al DeBorn, I want you to say something about Memphis, Tennessee, because I'm proud of my place. And he went out there and he absolutely cleaned house. He absolutely tore it up. Fantastic show. So this has been, for a long time, my favorite show. One is it's a commercial release. And so a lot of people, you know, non-fans or people that are casual fans would pick this up, not knowing what it is and listen to it, maybe get turned on to it. But just the uh, professional recording, the way it sounds is great. Uh, the vinyl is not so great with the sound, but this is this is way better. But just Elvis's mood, his demeanor, the joking with the crowd, the absolute effort that he gave, and he just absolutely knocks it out of the park. So, David, to answer your question, I hope everybody else made it to the end of the video. My personal favorite concert of all time from Elvis Presley is Elvis as recorded live on stage in Memphis, March 20th, 1974. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I forgot again. I do this every single time. If you don't like this, I don't know what to tell you except you ain't nothing but a hound dog.